So here's a question I've always had. If I have a salty diet yeah. or if I eat a bunch of salt directly before I do one of these tests, will that impact the amount of salt that I sweat out? Uh, sweat out? Not to a large extent, I don't think. So at the extremes, if you have a very salt deficient diet, which is hard to do actually because it's so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. pretty much yeah, it's everything. Really there, they did some studies many years ago, some really cool studies actually, where they took a, a doctor, took a group of people, I think it was in the 1930s. They lived in a house, they boiled their food three times and like stripped it of salt and they deliberately... Um, sort of removed all the salt from their diet. And they found after a few days that they did start to see less sodium in their salt. I think on the flip side, if you eat absolutely loads of salt, then you would imagine that you would be able to excrete more or you mm -hmm. might naturally do so. But the primary mechanism that the body controls salt levels with is in the kidneys. So you excrete more in your urine or mm -hmm. less based on what you're taking in. So again, it's one of those things that's probably strictly true yes you can influence it a bit by your diet but when we're testing a regular cyclist who hasn't been on a massively restrictive diet or hasn't literally just come back from mcdonald's and had you know <laughs> loads and loads of salt and even if they had you know if we tested their urine we would see a ton of salt in their urine then but i don't think you know from the amount of repeat testing we've done i would say people's levels are relatively stable. It's kind of in that same bracket, yeah. as they were saying. So if I do yeah. have French fries mm -hmm. the night before a race, it's not going to mess up my whole hydration plan for the next day? No, no, no. Okay. It's fries for everybody. Yeah. Well, too, I, I take, uh, I've done the salt loading <clears throat> for yeah. hot hydration. Does it, with that, so if that's an extreme, if I salt load before a race, will that impact my hydration strategy the next day? Uh, it, it could do, yes, because the idea of salt loading is that, you know, people often want to prehydrate before races. And one of the biggest education points that we talk to athletes about is like, you want to turn up to a race well hydrated, what do you do? You sit there, you know, in the days before, drinking, yeah. carrying a bottle around with you, sipping nervously, dry mouth because you're nervous, yeah. everyone else is drinking, you know. Yeah. And all you're doing then is you're going to flush w water through your body. Right. Whereas if you put a lot of extra salt in your diet and in your drinks immediately before you can retain a little bit more of that and i think for long endurance events or for very hot intense efforts when you're going to be pushing hard and you're going to be sweating a lot it's a beneficial idea hmm. but it, it requires a little bit of individual experimentation to see how much works for you yeah. because your body will to compensate right so if you're naturally salty all the time uh it's different like Correct me if I'm wrong, but you'll get a swing, right? Because your body will try to compensate. And you can only be in that like elevated salt level for so long before your kidneys go, nope, get all this out. Start kicking it out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, same with water. You know, we people drink loads of extra water, like I was saying before, races to prehydrate. Mm -hmm. But actually, you look at what... Um, fighters do before they're making weight before a competition mma fighters the boxers, opposite. <laughs> they'll drink a ton of water in the days a few days before yeah. to dehydrate yeah. because then you get this overcompensation you start weighing more then they suddenly stop drinking then yeah. their kidneys keep kicking out fluid for a, a few more hours or a day or two more and they get super dehydrated right. for the weigh-in then they take on a ton of salt and that. so i i always say to athletes you know whilst some extra salt loading could be beneficial and we recommend it in the build up to these events we're not talking about like massive drastic swings from what you do every day and every week because your body you know race day is just another hard workout mm -hmm. you want to you want to sort of give yourself every advantage but does, that doesn't mean changing everything in fact it probably means keeping things relatively similar yeah is there an ideal time then to salt load like before what i would do is the night before in the morning of because yeah. I wouldn't want to get that swing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly what we recommend normally is night before is a bit of a last minute top up. And we always say to athletes, look, maybe mix up 16 or 20 ounces of fluid, quite salty to to, to take, but, but drink it as you feel. You know, you don't need to nail the lot if you don't feel like drinking it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, the same goes for if you feel like drinking 30 ounces, you can. You know, it depends what you've been doing the last few days, how hydrated you are or not. Then on the morning, I would say, you know, an hour before, 16 ounces or so, maybe 20 ounces if you're a bigger guy yeah. with, um, with you know, a decent salt concentration. We talk upwards there of, you know, 1,200 to 1,500 milligrams per litre to take that on and then have that an hour before, gives you an hour to absorb it pee out anything you, you don't need to. You've not got a horrible bloated stomach and you're not mm -hmm. feeling bad and then you're ready to go. <laughs> That's great. Shorter than I thought. When I when we do this, do you need any carbohydrate in that to be able to absorb it better during the preloading phase? So 
with car- carbohydrate can improve the retention and absorption of fluid. If you're eating with that, as most people will be with breakfast, I don't think it matters about having carbohydrate in the drink specifically. Mm-hmm. But if you're just taking a, a solution for hydration, something around 3 to 4% carbohydrate is good. So about half the strength of a regular isotonic sports drink, mm-hmm. but three or four times more sodium than a regular sports drink. Interesting. Huh. <clears throat> Forgive me. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to ask too is like, I guess, does your body self-regulate on this in the sense that like kind of asking the question of how hydrated is enough? Because I, I think like a lot of people, whereas there are certain things that we can measure and we specifically go for, but with hydration, they just kind of keep drinking on a on a prayer, on a hope, you know, just hoping that they're drinking enough. Where's the limit? Is there somewhat, there's such a thing or does your body just manage that for you? you your body's pretty good at self-regulation. So as long as you give it an adequate amount of fluid and salt, then it, it will balance it out. Hmm. So when... One of the ways you can tell how well it's doing on that is to weigh yourself every day for a while, because Mm -hmm. even after some massive workouts, you know, you'll probably find if you lose, let's say, four or five pounds, six pounds in a workout, which is very doable in the heat, Mm -hmm. you'll, if, if, as long as that's not last thing at night, you'll wake up the next morning and your weight will, should have got close to being normalized because you'll get thirsty, you'll eat things, you'll consume sodium afterwards and, you know, you'll balance it out. Mm -hmm. I did a, a, a really long race for me. I've, I'm raced long for quite a long time. And I did a nine hour race two weeks ago oh, and we weighed me before so and after this race. Yeah. And it was a fairly warm day at parts. It was a swim run. So, and you can't drink a lot, but I think I lost uh, about two kilos, which is what, about four pounds. Four pounds yeah. But then, you know, a couple of days later or a day later, I'm back to normal and, you know, I'm not, I mean, I, it's maybe not a truly fair test because I've experimented a lot over the years and kind of feel like I know what I'm doing with the hydration nutrition aspect, but yeah. I still rely quite a lot on instinct yeah. to get back to there. And like I say, the body's good at self-regulation. So yeah. we, we need to, we need to get it about right. And people do screw up their hydration. They do screw up their nutrition because they get it way off. But if you get it about right, the body will sort itself out. That's an interesting point. Like I've seen that with some sweat testing is they have you weigh yourself before and after, but it's kind of tricky to know like how, like, like what are we, what's gleaned by that part of measuring, you know, I I guess from the test, like from how much you lost, because who knows what that actually is, right? Exactly. Yeah. I think what's gleaned from it is if you do it once is a potentially spurious number. Yeah. Um, If (laughs) you do it many, many times, what you build up is a picture of how much you tend to sweat. Yeah. which is very useful. Mm-hmm. So it, it it sounds like a plug, but on our website, you can download a spreadsheet. You know, it's just a basic Google sheet. You yeah. can, it tells you, there's a big blog on there that um, tells you how to measure your sweat rate. But the key thing is like we say, do it in loads of different conditions, loads of different days, build up a picture, you know, of how much you're drinking, how much you're sweating in these different conditions, different intensities, different modes of exercise. And what you're trying to learn from that is, okay, am I like, am I a big sweater? Am I like a two liters or more per hour guy? Or am Mm -hmm. I a six or 700 milliliters per hour? Am I a real low sweater? Now you might have, you might kind of know that, but I think having a handle on that number is good. Mm -hmm. I think that doing one sweat test and then deciding that's your sweat rate is just That's tough to do. Yeah. If you like this video, you should subscribe to our channel. Maybe even give this video a like with a thumbs up and a comment down below. If you want to see race analysis videos, you can click on it right over here. And if you want to get your coaching questions answered, you can click on it right over here. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, which you should, you should go over to trainerroad.com. It'll make you faster. We promise. We guarantee it, right, Nate? Guaranteed. (laughs) Or your money back. Yes, it's true, actually. We we really will do that. Yeah.